Welcome to another episode of the Garage Strength Podcast. Actually, with this, I, so my <laughs> my goal was to uh, to try and I wanted to like pitch my idea. We only have twenty five minutes. I wanted to try and pitch our idea of quantifying training. Oh, this is the Garage Strength Podcast with Dane Miller and Earl Kunkel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, he, to, he went through his thought too. to to try and. Okay, so Ivan pitched a really good question. We're talking about training to get from point A to point B. Correct. Is and the gist of it. And we've done a pretty good job of laying out like benchmarks and levels of yeah. where you're at. So like it. if you're in peak strength, you test the first week yes, and you on know. specific things and you yep. basically set your baseline and base like your test then informs what you need to improve on and like the exercises will get you there. So when you test again, you get here but what dane is going to talk about and like dive into is like well i want my 200 my 100 kilo snatch to be 150 kilo snatch how many reps and sets do i need to get at this weight how many times do i have to be able to hit work singles at this weight uh -huh. or a bench press like i want a 405 a 500 pound bench how many times in your life will you have to bench 405 pounds before 500 that's the big is one. in your ballpark. Like, so that was the big one that I had a lot of conversation with Alex about, yeah. with Sam about, with Jason. We could ask Taman because he, he's he bench 500. 500. And, it, and it goes down to how can we make this as simple for people to understand? And this all goes back to that question that Yvonne had when parents come in and they're saying like, all right, well, how long, what can I expect from my, from my athlete? And what's interesting is that I started to think about it and I'm going, I was I was thinking about Yaime. I'm like, how many throws does Yaime need at 65 to 68 meters to throw 70? Okay, so, so Yaime's thrown 73. She's actually the ninth best discus thrower in the history of the world. Um, but outside of that, let's say quantifying that to tell her, okay, we need this many throws for this to happen. We need this many reps on the bench press. And so then I can say, you know, so I, I I'm talking to Taman, to Sam, to Alex. I'm going, okay. These are all people who bench 500 pounds too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> using the bench press of 500 pounds. Okay. So you need about a thousand reps at 405 plus to get to a 500 pound bench. And obviously there's going to be some people that react quicker, some people that react slower, but you can quantify that. And then you can say, okay, so if I bench 405, you know, she's like 184, yeah. 185 for the first time. It might be like five or six months when you first get over 400 that in those first five or six months, you might only bench it like eight to 10 times. So you're looking at like six months of only benching it like eight to 10 times. Then the next six to eight months, you might bench it because you're starting to make adaptations. You're starting to get stronger. And if you're staying healthy, you might have another six to eight months where you're able to bench it probably about five times that. So let's say like 50 times. Okay. So now and this isn't at, in one day or one session. This is over, over the a period. Like, yeah. So now you're all of a sudden now, instead of a single, you, you're, you reach and hit a triple for yeah. like a, it's your new triple. So PR now your bench goes to four Oh five to four thirty. So I was laying out these points, four thirty to four fifty to four seventy five to 500. And when you start to look at it to make that jump could be anywhere from like two to four years for some people, like, and maybe even longer. So now you're looking at about a thousand reps, but you're quantifying that. And then when the athlete can see that and be like, all right, so if this is a quantification, so then I, then I started to think about it. Like, what does it take to go from a 500 to a six pound, 600 pound back squat? What does it take to go from, um, you know, a clean of a hundred kilos of, to 150 kilos, what needs to happen. And when you start to look at sports like track, what the, and swimming does this quite well, when they look at these very specific distances. So you watch, um, okay. So you watch like the, in distance, you could train the Norwegian method, which is essentially like You've got to run really, really hard hills once a week. You've got to get a decent amount of volume three to four days a week. And then you have to have one day that you train at your threshold, which is like a 60 to 90 minute run right around where this is endurance work. Yeah. Yeah. Cole Hockle, who just won the 15, 
doesn't do as much high intensity work, but he does a lot of runs around threshold. So it's a little different from what the Norwegian system is, but it's basically one of those two. Okay, well, you have to have X amount of minutes at threshold here to then make the jump to the next level for your improvement. You have to be able to run, using an example of a marathon, if I want to run a four-hour marathon, I need to first make sure I can run a a half marathon at sub two hours. Well, that's 850 miles. Okay, well, then I have to be able to run six miles at 850 clips to then build into that. So you had like these building points that are so clear that we ignore in the weight room but the speed world deals with it in sprinting uh you you can break down sprints really sort of i don't want to say elegantly but elegantly like breaking down the like phases. a biomechanist yeah phasing it down i believe they have a name <laughs> yeah exactly but we don't do that for weights like lincoln front squatted um 80 kilos for three Okay, so when should he be able to to clean that? Well, if he front squats 80 for five, he probably would be pretty close. He front squatted 80 for four, and he cleaned 74. So it's it's pretty close. Well, how many more reps will he need? He'll probably need to hit 80 kilos for another 30 reps, which is not that much, but it is at the same time. Yeah, that could be a day of training. It could be a day of training or for a kid who's in middle school, who's in seventh yeah, grade, a month, it could be a month and months. a half. Yeah. So now you're quantifying it and then you're able to tell the parent based off of the benchmarks of an elite athlete, based off of where they're at, what's the quantification, the time, the, the, the reps, the amount of workouts, and you can quantify those specific things to get to certain points. And then we can look at it. That individual will then have ratios established based off of their jumps versus their speed versus their strength. It makes me think of um, when I'm playing Elden Ring and I have to get like runes or something like that. Yes. Like, hey, you need. And so as you level up, like it's farther. You need more and more runes to get a level. Right. Yeah. But is this similar to me? It's similar to Zelda. Oh, yeah. Because Sanderson and Lincoln have been destroying Legend of Zelda. It's very similar. And watching it. And when you've talked about this, I'd be like, wow, this is pretty similar. Elden Ring's the adult version of Zelda. Okay. Easiest way to put it. Okay. It's it's the more I'm not saying Zelda's not for adults, but Elden Ring is not for children. Yeah, okay. Like okay. that's the easiest way to put it. Okay. Like um yeah. And you level up, right? You level up stuff, but like as you level up, the bosses get h- harder, the weights get heavier. Yeah. But it's like relatively then you you still need the same. It's just you got to beat someone more challenging. So, go heavier, get more reps at it. So, like, I recently PR'd my Elden Ring, like, all Remembrance Major <laughs> Bosses Run DLC included, by, like, three hours the last time I'd, I'd like, been playing what through the, the game. What are the packs, by the way? Because Alex brought his Switch or something, and he was talking about some packs in this. And packs what? I don't, uh, there was something what? that he has to, like, almost cheat the game that he and Rudy were talking about. They were playing at the Olympics. Oh, like, I don't I don't play a, the Switch. My my son Reese uses it for. Um, Is there some other way to put? Maybe it wasn't on the Switch. I, I don't. They were talking. Alex was talking about it for quite a while. I, I know they have on like if you play on Steam, they use like oh the Steam packs. Yeah, yeah. I I have a Steam Deck. Oh Steam Deck, Steam Deck. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. But yeah. like you can get, they call them. It's basically like if you're old like us, like a game genie. Yeah. But it's like a cheat. It's a cheat engine is what okay. they can be, and they're actually really cool. So, like, the Elden Ring cheat engine, the way I've seen it is it will show the hitboxes. So, like, the boss, like, swings, and it will, like, have, like, this yellow net. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that's where it can hit. So, you can basically learn where the iframe, like, how to time the iframes okay. to learn how to fight the boss. Yeah. And then also, too, you can set it so, like, you don't die. So, you can get, like, infinite reps. Okay. okay. Instead of having to, like, do the run back and do it again and, like... So then you get more reps that makes it easier yeah. to, to... Same concept yeah. here, right? Yeah, like, the, the more reps same. you get at these things, the so better you get. I think... I think where we've always struggled and, and where a lot of this also stems from was before the discus final, I had a talk with Ryan Krauser. He was a three-time Olympic champ. One of the, You are so small next to him dude, in that picture. huge. But... He was talking about um, marks with 
specific shots. And he's like, I know if I throw 22 meters with this shot, this will happen with my comp shot. And I just, dude, I was asking him a million questions and then writing notes uh, just because I, he's the greatest ever in the sport. He's the Michael Jordan of throwing. I, it, it's valuable. Shot putting. Yeah, of thro- yeah, shot putting. Um, and so for me, when I heard him talking about some of what he does with number of reps with certain implements and what he does with distances as well, we know that like, okay, if you have a kid, let's say you have a kid who weighs 200 pounds, if he can front squat 400 pounds, his vertical is very likely going to be 35 to 40 inches. Like I would put money down on this. Okay. And like, if you can do double two and a half times body weight. So someone like Evan, Evan can, he has front squatted, uh, 150 kilos and he's got a 42 inch vert. You know, like you can see some very, very clear correlations between weights and ratios and, and, and movement patterns. And to me, a lot of strength coaches know this, but no one's ever set out and said like, okay, how do we make this path even easier? We know to achieve this, this end product, it gets this end product, but do we don't know it, how many it's reps too to get often there. people have kids come in or athletes come in who can do it versus having kids who come in and work to being able to yes, do it. I think that so and it's they don't know. I know there's this one study you want to talk about that's like the nature nurture type oh, of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it 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 can ring of that sometimes. Like people don't recognize the work. Yeah. The talent has put in sometimes. Yeah. Like I get it. Like Kobe was talented, but Kobe put in a lot, a lot of work too. Like Ryan Krauser is talented, puts in a lot of work too. And like, sometimes we discount talents work ethic and over represent their results. Yes. And I don't know. That's just maybe a soapbox of mine. Like, yeah, but I think a lot of, but at the same time, like people who aren't as good can work and get there too. Yeah. At some point, if you're willing to invest And I think this is what you're talking about too. Like I can lay a roadmap out for an eight year old or a 10 year old, a 12 year old or a 14 year old through these numbers, through these quantifications to say like, here's the path to be able to do this. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is like you lay it out and then the longer they train, the more precise the path gets. Yeah. I can look at, you know, using Evan, I can look at Evan and be like, okay, well right now, hardest work in front desk worker. (laughs) <laughs> exactly i know his best back squats 175 i know his best clean is 145 off of a box i know his best clean off the floor is 140 i know his best snatch is uh like 115 to 120 okay his best power clean is 122 his best clean from the floor is 140 his best cl- power clean so his best power clean to back squat is 70 percent. okay this is pretty close to jake if we can push Evan's back squat higher and focus a lot of effort on his back squat. We should see that back squat increase. We don't have to put in any effort to his power clean and his clean will also increase because that's where we need to make up ground. But now you're looking at it. You're saying, okay, so if we can on a weekly basis, have him get um, anywhere from 40 to 60 reps in the back squat. Now I can lay that out and be like, okay, Evan, for you to back squat 190, you're going to need about 800 reps on the back squat over 160 kilos. So doing that, what comes away then? Like, does he lose reps in his cleans to get more of that? Like, uh, this is probably a more higher yeah, level. Yeah, you would lose a little bit, but it wouldn't matter because the strength. So, like, if there. I'm programming and I. And his power is so explosive, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. You would lose some reps in the cleans, yes. All right. And I. I don't know. That was probably a little off, but it, yeah, but that's, it's no, that's like the whole goal then is like, because it'd be the same thing. If you have somebody who comes in and you test them in the 40 and you're going like, well, your 40 is a lot slower than your back squat is compared to strength. Yeah. Well then one of those has to budge a little bit and we need to focus on your 40. Yeah. So, and your strength can stay where it's at your 40s or slow. vice versa. But your first ten yards is somehow blazing fast. Yeah, yeah. And your lifts are fast. All right, we don't, we're not worrying about your cleans and your your back squats as much. Yeah, you're still gonna do it. Like, we but get, it's we, not as much of a priority. Yeah. And then you can specify what is needed and within reason. The, this isn't this formula and these ratios are never gonna be perfect. 
but they're going to provide a realistic perspective for the athlete to execute. And I think that's the most important thing for them to comprehend long-term pro- progression is yeah. like, it makes it more realistic because then you don't have a kid who's in ninth grade and saying like, he wants to go be the next Aaron Donald. And you're like, dude, you can't even back squat a hundred kilos. Like that's not going to happen. And, and, but you can be the best Aaron. You Donald can use data to level. support why, like maybe Let's, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. But you can do it. You can another- crush kids dreams with data. <laughs> That's terrible, but I know it's, it's sort of true though. Uh, yeah. But also, you can provide a reality of like, look, maybe the NFL is not for you right now, but let's think about first making it to those D three levels, or yeah. or starting in varsity. Here are the steps you can take to to get there to try it's, to reach there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Making it a more realistic progression to get to that point instead of jumping all the way there. I think that's the way to. That's what it provides. Yeah. I so you on that. with doing that, it's been working backwards from like that elite group because I think they're going to be the ones that are going to have. You know where the reps. end, yeah. yeah, the end range can be, and then you come backwards. Yeah, and obviously there's going to be more standard deviation for a younger athlete. Well, yeah, because there's everyone comes out. I shouldn't say everyone, but most babies come out and they can't walk. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Except for my brother. He claims to be a walking prodigy. He, was, he says he was walking at six months. <laughs> Get out of here. He wasn't. It, it's just a joke between the two of us. Yeah. Maybe he was. Yeah. I've never heard of anybody walking before like nine months. Oh. Well, I maybe. <laughs> depends on how athletic. It has athletic. nothing to do with this conversation. Yeah. But depends on how athletic they are so as a fu- child. Yo, isn't it funny, though, with parents? like They, they like purposely like, yeah, my kid walked it. Ten and a half. Well, my yeah. kid walked at ten and a third. It's like dude, I've never seen someone get in like a, a it, measuring contest over how fast they walk. Yeah, it's just like always like walking. And it's like I just my think kid it's crawled funny. at four months. Cool. Yeah, I don't care. Um, it's almost like uh, and there's studies on this too around like oh my kid was reading at this age versus that age, and it's like well if they're reading by seven they're fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think everything's gonna work out. Yeah, they'll be fine. Well, no, they they done studies by like twelve and thirteen. They caught up to the kid that yeah. was reading at like three or four. Like yeah. it, it's it's okay. Yeah, everything's gonna be okay. It'll be all right. That's like I I love. <laughs> this is a funny story. My um one of my children was put in like the lower reading class in f- first grade and like basically got extra support with things and so then was, they just blew up they're like oh, they sweet. did and like I'm, I'm talking like my kids take like honors like my oldest daughter is like an en- an engineer like yeah. it's they're they do fine with school they work hard but like it's they can school comes and it's like i can figure this I got out this, too yeah. but also like they put in the work and i just always think that's so funny that like in first grade they're like worried about this i'm like she's seven yeah. six yeah it's like, i think she was six i'm like she's six like all right the world like it's gonna be all right we'll be fine like yeah. I'm, I'm more worried about like 24 30 yeah making 40 like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> six years old yeah trying to the reading's them. not there yet yeah but i think that's also funny because then it's like oh well let's give them more that more yeah. attention and then it works and it's like yeah why don't we do that to more kids resources well we, yeah too much flat taxes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's funny yeah full circle yeah exactly <laughs> so going back to it, it's like how many the biggest i guess the biggest project for me is when i'm meeting with Taman legend and to start thinking this way and to start thinking about it even with the throwing world and then how we can break this down and make it easier for the sprints for the lifts for the endurance stuff so that it's very very clearly laid out over and it's going to be a big effort that takes a long time but i think it could offer a lot of value to everybody in our system and and outside of well. need some of that trevor data analytics sheet there collecting oh, all of God. it and feeding it and then you're gonna have to go and upload it all in there too i don't i don't know how well that's gonna go that's gonna be terrible <laughs> i know how well it's gonna go i didn't want to say it out loud i, I know how i'll I, let you self-deprecate yeah, I, I know that very well <laughs> that's why i'd have to pay somebody to do it <laughs> 
So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play oh, Store. Oh, we, got, uh, we got, got audience questions. questions. Okay. We got two of them. Oh, I didn't realize. We still have time, too. Oh, yeah. Dude, don't mess. All right. Want to see stuff. They should still go to peakstrength.app and download. Yeah, no, they strength. should. And they should go and like give us good reviews, too. On Dude, the, the reviews the are sick. <laughs> yeah. With the app, with the podcast, like yeah. download, listen, YouTube, go subscribe to the YouTube yeah. channel. Trying to get to a million. Yes. Like... 100 percent almost at six hundred thousand. yeah that's closing in quicker yeah we're yeah all right one two c stuff this is from reddit hi i just bought and watched the gspd course and got the parabolic periodization ebook to learn more about the gs programming approach well it does a great job explaining the general structure in regards to the yearly cycle different blocks and weekly structure i'm still a bit confused when it comes to week to week load choices Sounds like they want to know about static and ramping. Yes. Um, I understand that intensity is regulated by the set and rep choices in combination with ramping and static weeks. Does that mean that the last ramping set is always supposed to be at max effort, i.e. RP 9 or 10? So far, I, I searched the blog and listened to quite a few podcast episodes, but couldn't find an answer. Uh-uh, here it comes. That's a good question. So, I think it... I know what my thought is. Well, you you give your thought. Athlete typing can play a huge role. Oh into, yeah, yeah. I mean, if if yeah. you're a a type three, like going it's going to be a nine ten almost. Yeah. You yes. have to govern them. If it's a type two, it depends on the day. Yeah. Um, they probably want to go for broke to like prove it to themselves. If it's a type one, they'll do essentially what they're told to do with it. Like, um, I also th so on top of that, I would argue it would really be dependent upon what phase you're in because you want to make sure that let's say you know, if it's a weightlifter for example well, parabolic periodization is all weight lifting. weightlifting yeah. like so if we have a weightlifter like we don't want them dying on back squats three days a week so that they can barely lift other days like we want to make sure that they can handle the volume uh, of other days I, I would argue I, I think that this is actually interesting because I've been on this kick. Actually, ironically, filmed a video during Yaime's session because I yelled at Yaime for how she was throwing and I wanted her to throw easier today because I wanted her to throw really far tomorrow. And I was telling her how we're periodizing the throws going into her last meet on the year. And then I was laying that out. I made a whole video on Throws You for this where it's like throwing hard versus drilling versus like static type throwing. And to me, it's it's like it's really this interplay that I think we could do a better job fleshing out. I think we have an idea internally and I think we apply it internally with a pretty damn good idea. But we don't do a good job of educating people, including our own trainers to a point. So I think that there's there's more to draw out from that. But I, I do think there's like weeks where it's better to just get a lot of volume at, at a specific intensity. So more of the static type yeah. stuff. And then the other weeks, it's like, yeah, day to day, like there's some days that you might want to prioritize and clarify the priority of being like, all right, let's push a, push a back squat now because it's uh, exposure phase or it's comprehension phase versus at the end of a program with weightlifters, like, all right, let's push a snatch or a clean, clean yeah. jerk. So it would be dependent on that. My, as an athlete in the system too, as a master's athlete too, not even a young kid athlete. Um, week one was always, especially when you start out, was just try to establish numbers to, to go off of. Yeah. And then I personally thought I always got stronger in a static week and like to work as close to the top end as possible. Yeah. And you just keep repeating. Yeah. It, it especially because personal thing is I think weightlifting is more a rhythmic thing yeah. than it is an actual like, how strong you are thing because mm -hmm. i know there was plenty of people much stronger than me just based off what they could squat and things of that nature and if i could but if i could hammer in the lifts that mattered more you and just ha could find the rhythm uh, i know one of the things dane likes to program is like a seven by one on the minute yeah. towards like when you're supposed to be peaking i always felt that was the most informative of like am i prepped or not like dude anna just did that on friday she yeah. did that at 98 kilos hits all of them and it's like She's got a meet on on Saturday. It's this Saturday. It's like Anna, you're in freaking really really good shape. You just hit 
probably maybe your opener for seven singles. Yeah, we're s- essentially, singles. and if you're working in an opener, like you're ninety, you're over ninety five percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, like yeah. And so to that question, like when you're at when you're summit, like phase when hey, the next thing is realization, and here's the competition. Like you're working incredibly heavy there, right. like. But it shouldn't necessarily feel like a stress at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, I shouldn't say it shouldn't feel like a stress. It's like it shouldn't be murdering you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. But always too heavier is better, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you'll get more reps you at four oh five when you want that five hundred pound bench type of thing. Yeah, like, if you're doing five by five at four oh five, you're probably gonna bench four sixty five. But that's also the auto regulation. Like that day you don't have it. Like you don't have it. Yeah, move on. Deal with it. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Your life's not over. Or just hit it once and then be like, all right, that was good enough. Yeah. Those eight other misses count as pulls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the other question? Oh, the other one. This is from uh, Keist. Discord. Should SNC coaches make an effort to actually do the sport before starting to make SNC programming for the sport? Or at least do a similar sport to feel and understand the physical demands? Ooh, this one's a hot button one, I think. Well, I don't think you have to do the sport, but I think you have to have respect for what they're doing. And I think that you've got to spend a lot of time talking with them. And like, I remember working with Margot Gear about uh, swimming and a lot of that work that I did with her, I would spend time like, Margot, what, how do you feel after you do these, these pool workouts? How do you feel, you know, recovery wise how do you handle this and that's you know now i did swim when i was younger till i was like 14 so i had an idea but like dude i didn't swim anywhere close to like that super world-class level so i think like to answer keith's question i don't think you have to but i think you have to pay a lot of respect to the sport you should try certain things you should see how you feel after them and you should understand like how long it takes to recover from specific sport workouts and specific uh, supplemental workouts. Because I, I think if you're not if you're not respecting the effort and respect, respecting the time that it takes to recover, then you're going to end up programming things that are just not effective. So understand the algorithm, understand the quantification, help younger athletes and older athletes do that, and then in turn, as a coach, respect that and continue to work forward and also head over to peakstrength.app download peak strength start getting faster start getting stronger improve your endurance and improve your explosiveness and until next time peace